Hello, I'm Sarah Whitaker. Welcome to the wonderful Blake and Bull kitchen. Today I'm going to be cooking a roasted butternut squash soup for you. The ingredients for the roasted butternut squash soup are a butternut squash, potato to thicken it, some chopped onion for flavour, a bit of garlic for extra flavour and some lovely stock. This is vegetable stock, but if you haven't got vegetarians wanting to eat the soup, you can always use homemade chicken stock or bought chicken stock. There is no shame in buying stock ready-made. It's jolly good these days. And then at the end, to finish it off, I've got a bit of cream to pour into each bowl just to enrich it and some parsley for the end just to show that I've made a bit of an effort. The first thing I'm going to do is soften some onions and some potatoes. So I've got my lovely vol, big, big casserole pan and a splash of oil. Then I've got a chopped onion, which goes in and then some potato. And the potato I've cut into chunks. I haven't peeled it because we need the fiber and the flavor. And I'm just going to drain off the water the potatoes have been sitting in some water to stop them going brown as they wait to be used. They go into the pan. Then I'm going to put the lid on the pan, give it a shake, and then set it on the boiling plate for the onions and the potatoes to begin to sizzle and fry in the hot pan in the oil on the boiling plate. So we're just going to open the lid, pop that on the boiling plate, lovely big wide pan covers the entire boiling plate so it's going to be very quick to come up to the boil. As the onions and the potatoes begin to sizzle and fry in that bit of oil in the pan they're going to give off some steam. The steam is going to rise and hit the lid. When the lid of the pan is too hot to rest your hand on comfortably there's enough steam in the pan that the onions and the potatoes are at boiling point. At that stage, I'm going to put the pan into the simmering oven. It goes in cooking, it continues to cooking. Put the lid down, Argo heat is contained within the cooker. They go in and they just carry on cooking gently in the simmering oven for about 10 or 15 or 20 minutes or until you remember to get them out again. Whilst that's in the oven, the next thing to do is the butternut squash. I don't know about you, but if you try and peel a raw butternut squash, it, you need to sort of, nuclear weapon and an axe to get into it because they are rock hard. So the way I do it is I take my butternut squash, I open the roasting oven door and I throw it in. And in 45 minutes, you get it out again. And in true, here's one I'd made earlier fashion, here is one that I made earlier. It goes in the oven after 45 minutes, it's nice and soft. You just pop the stalk off it and you can just literally Peel that skin off with your fingers. It comes away so, so, so easily. Then you cut it up into chunks, ready to add to the soup later. So another, here's one I made earlier. There is a butternut squash cut into chunks. If you like, and if you're very keen on lots and lots of fiber, you can just put the whole butternut squash, skin pips and all, into the soup as it is. But today I've got the squash cut up. So my soup, my, you can see the lid of the pan is getting nice and steamy. The steam's rising, it's hitting the lid of the pan. As the pan heats up, as the lid heats up, the steam is contained within the pan, so there are no cooking smells. We don't want greasy onion, potato steam filling the entire building. We want the, all the flavour, all the steam to be within the pan. So as soon as that is too hot to rest your hand on comfortably, you know it's at boiling point, it then goes into the simmering oven, it goes in boiling, it continues cooking. And as I say, 10, 15 minutes, the onions and the potatoes are softened and are ready to go. The onions and potatoes have had a couple of minutes on the boiling plate now, and you can see when I lift the lid, Clouds of steam coming off there, lovely cooking smells. Keep the lid on, keep the steam contained. Because that's now at boiling point, it goes into the simmering oven, goes in boiling, continues cooking. Minimum of 10 to 15 minutes, maximum of get it out when you remember. Shut the lid and then ready for the soup. I'm taking my jug of stock and I'm just going to stand it 
on the front of the cooker so that it warms up a bit, so that it's going to boil faster, so you're spending less time in the kitchen cooking the soup and more time doing something else while the soup cooks itself. The roasted butternut squash soup base of the potatoes and the onions has been in the oven for 15 minutes. It's now ready to add the rest of the ingredients. So I'm going to get the pan out of the simmering oven onto the work surface. At this point, when I take the lid off the pan, clouds of lovely steam. There was no steam at all until I took the lid off the pan and I've got softened, sweated, cooked potatoes and onions ready for the base of my soup. So at this point, I'm going to add some garlic. I very rarely add garlic at the frying the onions stage because it's so easy to have overcooked, slightly overbaked, slightly almost burnt tasting garlic. Whereas if you add it in at this point, you get the fresh, intense garlic flavor. Then I've got my stock that's been sitting, warming up gently on the side of the cooker. In that goes. Then I'm going to tip in my chopped up butternut squash, stir everything together, put it back on the hot plate, taking care because the pan has been in the oven, it is at boiling point, the handles of the pan have been in the oven, they are at boiling point. Because the pan is so hot and because the stock was warm when it went in, it's going to come up to the boil very quickly which means the lid of the cooker is not up for very long. Once it's boiling, put the lid on, pop it back into the simmering oven for two or three minutes or two or three hours until you're ready to puree the soup and serve it. So that's just coming up to the boil on the hot plate, back into the oven and off we go, walk away from the kitchen. I do love leave the kitchen as part of an instruction in any recipe, because no other cooker lets you leave the kitchen like this one does. Lid on, back into the oven, ready to puree later. The soup's now had long enough in the simmering oven, so it's time to get it out of the oven, puree it, ready to serve. So, out of the simmering oven comes my great big bucket of soup. Lid off and that is now ready to puree. You can puree it in a blender if you like, but there's a lot less washing up involved if you have a stick blender. Hand blender and I'm... I like to leave a few chunks in there because when you buy butternut squash soup, it's either completely pureed or slightly lumpy. If you leave a few chunks in, it's half and half. You get the best of all worlds. So now into a warm bowl. And then to finish it off, got a little swirl of double cream just for richness and flavour, and it looks very pretty. And a bit of chopped fresh parsley to show I've made an effort. And that is roasted butternut squash soup on your aga cooker. I'm serving the soup with some lovely crusty sourdough bread. I hope that you've enjoyed this recipe. If you have, I hope you enjoy cooking it yourselves at home. The recipe and lots of others are all on the Blake and Bull website, blakeandbull.co.uk. Thanks for watching.